Um, Tyson kind of goading a response from Deontay Wilder. Obviously, Shelley Finkel came in to speak to Wilder halfway through the press conference. What did you make of that whole situation? Tyson is Tyson, you know, that's what, that's what he does, that's how he rolls, that's him, you know, and um, he likes to break a man down mentally as well as physically. I think he's achieved that already, you know, because when a man can't look him in the eye, it's a sign of uh, surrender to me that, you know, they wouldn't have a face-off, you know, and I know there was no security there, and the face-off, I've since learned from Bob Arum, was never intended, but Tyson would still face off. Those are the words of John Fury as he gives his take and responds to the press conference between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. And his take on it was when Tyson Fury made Deontay Wilder speak that, like John Fury said, when you can't look a guy in his eyes, you know you've got him defeated. Let me counterpunch. Um, I've been watching, uh, I saw a video yesterday. It was a, a psychiatrist. And he was uh, watching the body language of Wilder. You know, he was looking down at his phone. He was rubbing his, uh, rubbing his leg. And, you know, you know, according to him, those were signs that Wilder was not... Um, well or either he was uncomfortable at that type of situation he was doing this with his temples and things of that nature and um i can't speak on that yet until i do some more digging okay i won't take his word for it because he is british so i want to take another look at the body language itself from deontay wilder but i can tell you this what i've noticed like john fury mentioned Wilder did look down. He didn't really want to look at Tyson Fury. Um, he didn't want to hear Tyson Fury because he he was uh, he put his his uh, headphones on just like he did until he was asked to take them off, and he took them off, which was a good thing because without that, we would have had someone ignoring the press conference that you're involved in while not responding to the person that you're supposed to fight you know and a lot of people might look at that and see that as hey you know well dude what what's wrong with you you know what is it about that man that you can't look at him as a man and tell that man how you feel about him especially with all the accusations thrown around you know and just brewing up out of wherever right um so you know i noticed wilder looking at his phone and shout out to uh, Bruce Bain. You know, he made a good point. Um, what the fuck was on your phone that you had to look at it right then? Was it text messages? Was it, were you looking up something? Were you trying to buy something? Social media, Instagram, Facebook, you know, Twitter. Like, what was it that you had or you had to look at that was more important than what you were doing right then. Like all of your energy, if you look at Wilder, most of the time he was looking down at his cell phone, right? He was looking at his cell phone. He was taking that cell phone and he was just, you know, like gazing at it, you know? And I'm like, okay, well, how do you go from putting your headphones on to gazing at your phone unless they were synced? So I've been, I've gave it thought like, okay, well, maybe he wanted to listen to some music or whatever. Well, the, the, the headphones were off. Well, if that's the case, you didn't hear any music because, because they were on stage with the press conference. So, again, he wouldn't listen to music because uh, Kate told him to, to ask him to take him, to, take him off his head. So he took him off his head, right? So since he took him off his head, there was no music you were listening to. So you had to be looking at something else. And that's what people say is a sign that when you want to avoid people, you look at your phone and pretend they're not, they're not there. You know, um, I know Wilder could be like, hey, ready to go, ready to fight or whatever. But then it's like, like, why would you do that? It's almost like he needed something to do in an uncomfortable situation. And then again, uh, I have to look at the body language, but I could see anybody and anybody could tell you if you were around someone that didn't want to talk to you, 
they would do certain things like put the headphones on like a teenager would do. They don't want to hear their parents. My daughter used to do that. She'd do this shit all the time and put her head, you know, if she had headphones, which, you know, they didn't have any but earbuds, right? So she used to do that. So, you know what I mean? So I, I, I know what that's like. If you don't want to hear somebody, you're going to try to avoid them out or tune them out. That's not a good sign when you have the, you have this person in front of you. You know what I mean? And not really looking at him. I seen Wilder look at him for uh, like a brief second. You know what I mean? And he looked, he looked aggravated. You know, but again, I will do another video on that later on today. But John Fury was like, you know, he already had him uh, mentally beat. So I don't know if he's mentally beat, but to me, he 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 didn't seem like he was all the way comfortable. He didn't, you know, because when when Wilder started speaking again, you could tell that those were things that he said or needed to needed to be said that Wilder just should have said anyway. He should have just been prepared to speak, prepared to say what he had to say to Tyson Fury, not to everyone else, not to uh, a friend slash interviewer of his, but no, directly towards Tyson Fury, because he's the one that he's accusing of cheating him and everything else, along with Mark Breland and then the referee and then, you know, other shit that's involved. But while he had Tyson Fury there, he should have been prepared to speak to him because I think he wasn't prepared. I think what he was trying to do is stay calm, remain calm, and not really engage on too much of conversation in that interview. So um, I think instead of you know him getting aggravated enough to speak, I think he should have been more prepared to speak. But anyway, that's my counterpunch on that. You guys tell me what you think of John Fury saying that Deontay Wilder is already mentally defeated. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys have been counterpunch. Peace.